Hey guys, my name is William Justice. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve animations and effects. The other day I got a message from Michael. He was setting up an animation with two points. He had a line set up between these two points with a tracker and he had a question. So he said, hey William Justice, big fan of your channel. I like that. So you track two points, you have the line between them. Can you make the line change color based on how far apart the two points are? Thanks, Michael. So you mean like this? We have two points with a line, move them closer together and further apart, and we have the line color change. I've done some videos similar to this in the past where I've done quite a bit of tracking, and I'm going to have some links in the description below for those if you want to check out more about the tracking. We're going to do real quick on the tracking on this one, and then we're going to take it a step further and really focus in on how to compute the distance between the points and use that to adjust the color. Obviously, we could use keyframing to do this and adjust the color as the distance changed, but I don't like using keyframes if I absolutely don't have to, so we're going to do this um, in a little bit different way using some expressions to compute the actual distance and use that to dynamically change the color of the lines. Okay, first step is we are going to track the points. Once the points are tracked, we're going to connect those points up and create a line between the two points. Then we're going to add a bit of style to kind of make it look a little bit more interesting. Once we have that down, we're going to use the actual positions of the points to compute the distance between them. So they're closer together, we're going to get a smaller distance, bring them further apart, and the distance will change. Once we have that number changing and dynamically adjusting, we're going to use the distance number to adjust the color. Okay, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, effects, fusion, and a whole lot of fun things that I have planned. Also, check out my next video because it's going to be using this animation down here with the uh, stretchy text. I kind of created this a while back. Um, also, I'd really be interested to see how you might solve this problem once you see the way I did it. Um, there's probably a lot better ways to do it, maybe a lot more interesting ways to do it. Um, it's always a challenge, so I'd like to see what you come up with. If you have any comments, questions, or a better solution, which would be awesome, Make sure you leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, let's get this set up here. We have um, this clip of these circles here. And as I move them around, we're going to track them and get the line set up. And once we have that, then we can set up the colors. So to get started, let's right click on the clip, choose new fusion clip. And then at the bottom of the screen, click fusion to go into fusion. All right, let's set up the tracking. We're gonna go to the very first frame with media in one selected. We're gonna hit control space and type tracker and we have our tracker in. You can see this little green box here. We're gonna grab the dot in the upper left-hand corner of the inner box and drag it right into the middle of the first circle and size it to be just inside of there. This is the first tracker. It's gonna track the circle on the left. Now what we're gonna do is go into the inspector. Under tracker list, hit add, and that's gonna set up tracker two, and we have this other tracker up here. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other circle. We're gonna drag it right into the middle of that circle. You click the little uh, corner to move it around. Expand the search area. Okay, so we have both the trackers set up. So what we need to do now is to track this. It's going to follow each of the circles and create points for each of the positions. Make sure we're on the first frame. For adaptive mode, choose best match and hit track forward. Okay, now we have the tracking points set for tracker one and tracker two. Now let's set up a line between each of these. So we're gonna take a background, drag it into the node area. Let's set the background color to yellow in the inspector. We're going to take the background and merge it right on top of the tracker and the background is going to sit right there. So what we need to do is mask out where our line is going to be. To do that with background one selected, click the polygon tool. Now we just need to draw our polygon. In the viewer, we're going to click one point and two points. So there's our line. Now the polygon, we can uncheck solid and bring up the border width. The next step is to be able to control the positions of each of those points. Hit the select all points, right click on one of the points, choose polygon one polyline and choose publish points. And you notice right down here, we have our points. This is the left point and the right point. So all we need to do is connect each of those points to the tracker. So right click on point zero, connect to tracker one path position. Let's do the same for the second point. Right click on point one, connect to tracker one, tracker path two, position. And now we have our line that is following our tracked points. All right, so to change the color of this line, all we really need to do is adjust the background. And now we have a red line. So we're gonna to try to automate all this. First, let's um, change the line style just a little bit. With background one selected, let's choose the blur node. Then with the blur node selected, hit control space 
and we're going to search for soft glow and adjust the glow settings. Let's move these up and we're going to throw a little displacement on it. With soft glow one selected, hit control space and search for displace. We're going to take this fast noise and drag it in and connect that up to the green input on the displace. With the fast noise selected, we're going to boost the detail and contrast and scale. These can really be anything that you want. And we'll go into the, to the displace, choose the type of XY, and we'll adjust the Y refraction. The first method we're going to use to adjust the color is a color corrector node. So with displace one selected, hit control space and, and search for CC. And that's going to bring up the color corrector and add that in. So we can adjust this color by changing the hue. So we're going to create an expression that's going to adjust the hue based on the distance between the two points. So how do we compute the distance? First, we need to get the positions of each of the points, and then we can plug those into the distance formula. So let's go to the tracker. So we have tracker one and tracker two. Let's select tracker one, and we're going to hover over tracked one center down here. And if you look over to the bottom left of the screen, you're going to see that property is called tracker one, tracked center one. Let's go to tracker two. Hover over that, and it's tracker one, tracked center two. So that those are going to give us our x, y positions that are going to allow us to compute the distance. So I'm going to pull up Notepad and show you how the formula works. So this is the x and y position of the first tracker and the x and y position of the second tracker. So I'm going to put the distance formula right down below so that we can get it figured out. So the first thing we need to do is get the square root of the x difference and the y difference. This is the x position of point one minus the x position of point two squared. Now let's get these, the y position. We have the y position minus the y position squared. All right, now that we have both of those, we just need to get the square root. All right, so we have the square root of these two things added together. So it's going to be just like that. We're gonna put this formula into a text node so we can see what's going on. Uh, there's our text node, so let's move it up just a bit. Right there, we're going to right click and say expression, and we're gonna plug our expression in right there. So let's get back to notepad. Copy the expression and paste it in. That is the distance between these two points. So as you play, as we play through, you'll notice that the distance changes. It gets bigger right there. And then right in here, you see it's a lot smaller. To get the color to work, we want the color value to go from zero right here and cycle all the way to one. That's going to go through the whole range of colors. To get this to go from zero to one, we need to find the closest distance and the max distance. So the closest that these two are together, it looks like it's a 0 0.085. So let's jot that down. What we need to do is take this distance and we're going to, we're going to set that up as a average of the min versus the max. So we're going to put parentheses around this. I'm going to subtract off 0 0.085. So what that's going to do is it's going to take the minimum distance to about zero. Let's plug that in. So now when we get in here, you see it's just about zero. Now let's go find that max distance. Looks like it's about 0.53. So let's uh, let's say 0.54. We're going to divide this by 0.54, and let's plug that in, and that should get us close. You kind of have to play around with the numbers a bit, but yeah, see, it's almost one right there. So we have a, a minimum of close to zero and a maximum of one, which is exactly what we need for this color corrector. So what we can do is right-click on the hue, do expression, and plug in our formula, and here we go. This is the first way I came up with to adjust the color. It's, it, you can't really choose the color. It kind of goes along with the color spectrum. So what I want to do now is take this formula and we're going to put it into a property on the polygon, just so it's a little bit easier to find. So right click on the polygon, choose edit controls, and let's type in distance. And it's going to be a slider control. Hit OK. And what that did is that added this user tab over here. We're going to click that and here's our distance. Right click, choose expression, and we're going to plug in our formula. We've created something called polygon one distance. So we can use this anywhere we want to use our distance. So let's go back to the color corrector and we're going to get rid of this ugly formula here and type in polygon one dot distance. And it does the exact same thing. You see the numbers are changing right here, going from our pretty much zero to one when it's at the maximum. Okay, let's say we want to pick our colors and not, use, not just use the colors on the spectrum. So let's get rid of this color corrector. And we're going to look at this, take a look at this background up here. And we're going to change this up just a little bit. We're going to put in a merge node and plug the background of the merge node into the foreground of the merge node. And we're going to take another background 
and plug it into the background of the merge node. Set the background to transparent, connect up our polygon mask, and then connect up that into the blur. We have everything back. This node right here is going to control our background color. To be able to customize our colors, let's uh, we're going to bring up two viewers here, and we'll put our background here. So we just have a solid background. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a gradient. With background one selected, choose type of gradient. And let's set up some colors. All you need to do is click in this bar where you want to create a color, and then click the down below to set the color. All right, so we got a color spectrum going. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a crop node onto this. So here's our background, and we're going to hit control space and search for crop. Select crop and hit one. So we're going to, for the, for the crop, we're going to set the X size all the way down. We're going to make it really small. Well, we'll make it like, uh, we get five, let's say six pixels. So let's put the merge in viewer one. So you can see right here, we have that little red dot. That's where everything got cropped out. So we take a look at the crop and view one right that. So we want the crop to fill the whole area. Let's take the, uh, let's take this polygon mask off right there. When we look at the merge, we got a thin red line going down the middle. All we need to do to get the line to fill the space is go to the merge node, select edges, and we're going to say wrap. And what that's going to do is it's going to take that th this thin line and wrap it to fill the whole background size. So let's connect up our polygon again. Now we can adjust the color of the line by going to our crop and adjusting the X offset. And what this is doing is we'll put the background here. It's adjusting how far into this gradient we're cropping. So if we just take a look at, let's remove the polygon and just take a look at our merge. So you can see that where we're cropping is in an orange section. So if we move it all the way to the left, which is zero, it's going to be red. And if we move it all the way to the right, which is going to be like, uh, it's like around 1900 because we're 1920 by 1080. And you can see we're cropping right in here, which is the green. So let's connect back up our polygon. So now that we've created a solid from a gradient, connect the polygon into the merge and we can adjust the line color by adjusting the X offset. If we can adjust this crop, we can customize the colors and how the gradients progress. So let's right click, choose expression. And we know that the max offset is 1920. So we're gonna go 1920. And we're gonna multiply that times our polygon one distance, which is gonna go from zero to one. So it's basically a percentage. So we're gonna go from zero to 1920 for the X offset based on our distance. Polygon one dot distance. And you can see that we're right in there. And as we adjust this distance, so this is a small distance, so we're gonna be on the left-hand side. And as the distance gets bigger, you're gonna see when it's at the biggest here, it's going to be on the green side. So now we have the color adjusting based off the distance between the two points with a gradient background for defining the progression of our colors. Now we don't have to have a gradient here. You, you could actually create color bars. Let me show you how to do that super quick. Now we just need to add a mask into each of these. So we're gonna take a rectangle mask, put it in here. Instead of our gradient background, we're gonna plug in the color bars that we just created. Um, let's see, we'll put the color bars in the this viewer. So we're gonna to go to blue and it's gonna immediately jump to another color when it gets into that range. All right, let's put our gradient back and I'm gonna show you one more way to do this real quick. Um, this is kind of a wacky way, but uh, it's kind of interesting at the same time. Still put it up there and let's add another background in. And you can see it's default background color is black. We can change it to whatever we want. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, on this background, we're gonna adjust each of these red, blue, and green by looking at this background one, which is the gradient. So with background seven selected, we're gonna right click on red and choose modify with probe. Right click on green and say modify with probe. And right click on blue and say modify with probe. And what the probe is gonna do is it's actually gonna inspect an area of our gradient once we set it up and it's gonna pull the color from that and use it right here. When we set the modify with, we actually created a modifier here. So you can say we have three modifiers, probe one, two, and three. For the probe to work, we need to give it the name of the image. All right, we're gonna be probing background one. So let's go back to background seven, modifiers. And for the image to probe, we're gonna type in background one. And we're gonna add that in to each of the probe areas. Now you'll notice that when we move this, you can see right here we have this little arrow moving. 
and that's the area that we're going to be probing. The top probe is going to be for the red channel. The next one is going to be for the green channel. And the last one is the blue channel. So this is going to be looking for the red, blue, and green values from here. So all we need to do is for our position, you notice as we change the position of these, our value is changing, but we need the X position to be the same as our distance, which is our zero to one. So let's right click on position, choose expression, and for the X, so it's point with an X comma Y. So for X, we're gonna type in polygon one distance. And we can use that same expression for each of the other probes. Right click, expression, and right click, expression. And you'll see that this is, this is our probe in the blue area. And as we change here, you'll see that the probe is moving and it's picking up the color that's right underneath it. So it's going into the blue and then into the green. So you can see it follows along based on our distance. Um, this is a kind of a crazy way to do it, but I thought it was kind of interesting in the same way. What it's doing is adjusting the red, blue, and green values based on the distance. You see these change as this distance changes. All right, so we got three different ways to set up the change in the color based on the distance between two points for a line that's being tracked. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or whatever, uh, make sure you leave them in below and I will get back to you. I love hearing what you have to say. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it. Subscribe to the channel for more videos about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Effects, and creating animations. Lots of fun stuff coming soon. Thanks so much for watching.